Welcome to uh, Code Corner from Mayfield Renewables. My name is Ryan Mayfield, and today I'm going to talk about the 2020 NEC and specifically grounding and bonding on supply side connections. And I'm joined today by Ryan Jackson of Ryan Jackson Electrical Training. So I'm really excited to have Ryan on. Of uh, you know, codex code expert uh, knows I've uh, been working in the electrical industry for a long time, and with this very topic, it's interesting because it's it's something that we deal with in solar systems a lot, but it is very much rooted in 250. And so I wanted to bring Ryan on, uh, use his expertise to kind of help uh, illuminate some some light on on this issue and what we're what we're up against here. So thank you, Ryan, for joining. My pleasure. Good to uh, good to see you. Yeah, yeah, good to see you. So let's jump into it. Uh, you know, want to talk about what what it is that we are uh, trying to accomplish here. So in 2020, 705.11, as many people know who are working in solar in the solar industry, 705.11 is our supply side connections, and that's a brand new code section uh, of as of 2020. What is I would say missing from that code section. Well, I should step back. It's it's awesome that we have a supply side connection section now. It, prior to 2020, it was all, yep, you can do it, but we're not going to really tell you how to do it. So go back into 230, go back into 250, fumble around, have fun, uh, make it happen. So now at least we have some legitimate rules we can point to. The one thing that is, I would say, missing, it was actually in the code till the very last moment was some direct um, some direct rules on grounding and bonding for our systems. But alas, 250.25 is also a brand new section. And as we can see here, the title of 250.25 is grounding systems permitted to be connected to the supply side of the disconnect. So it is exactly what we were looking for. It's, it's what we needed. Uh, it's just not in 705.11. So I'm going to pull up the language here of 250.25 and uh, 25A, which are the, the primary sections uh, for this. But in short, you can see it's saying that, you know, when we have systems connected to the supply side of the service disconnect, we have to comply with A or B. And the A is grounded systems, B is ungrounded systems. So for our typical electrical systems that we're going to run across, they're going to be grounded systems. And then what you can see here is it basically points us to 250.24a through d. So in a sense, there's not a whole lot new here um, because 250.24 was already there, but it, we have the, a, a nice section saying, hey, go look at this very specific section. So Ryan, I don't know if you have anything on 25 or 24 specifically uh, as it relates to this. Well, you know, it, it talks about a grounded system, and that's that's a term that a lot of people confuse. So, in in the world of electricity, we have we we ground two things: we ground metal stuff, we ground equipment, and we ground a system. And the system being grounded uh, is done by the utility. All right, so they take the actual winding of their transformer and connect it to the dirt. So even if your house is a hundred years old and you don't have a green wire in your entire building, you are still supplied by a grounded service. There's not a house in the country that's supplied by an ungrounded system. And there's very few commercial buildings that are actually supplied by an ungrounded system either. So almost without fail, you're going to be reading subsection A. Okay, yeah, thanks for that. And so, um, and I think another maybe um, point that we used to call our PV systems that didn't have that are transformerless or un, um, non-isolated inverters. We used to call them ungrounded systems. Uh, come 2017, that language got changed to functionally grounded systems. And so, uh, hopefully, at this point, we're not calling anything ungrounded uh, because truly, we're we have systems that are grounded in one form or another. Right. Okay. So let's jump in, and we're going to use this example of an, of a fire pump. Uh, connected to the supply side of a service disconnect. And one of the things in the solar industry specifically, I've heard a lot, and I know it's, I probably even echoed this a lot, is if you are installing a uh, system on the supply side of the disconnect, then install it as if it were a new service. And so that was one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on, Ryan, is so, okay, I'm going to install a brand new service and what does that actually mean? Uh, how do I actually install that? 
And so which wires am I running? How are they running? All this kind of stuff. And so we're showing a fire pump here, which is uh, one of the um, devices that is allowed per 230.82 to be installed on the supply side of the service disconnecting means. And so, um, so I guess, Brian, walk us through on if I'm going to install that um, fire pump on the supply side of the disconnect, what, what am I up against? Yeah, so this would actually just be a, an additional service disconnect enclosure, uh, which is essentially what we're doing in 705.11 ultimately. So if we, if we start at the utility source, we've got, this is a single phase system. So we've got two ungrounded conductors and a ground dead conductor. And like everybody else in the, in the industry, when I say ground dead, I'm very clear to, to enunciate it properly. A ground dead conductor is white or gray, it's not green. So we've got two ungrounded and one grounded conductor going to the utility meter. Inside of that utility meter, the ground dead conductor is going to be connected to the enclosure in the meter socket enclosure. We leave the, the meter and we go to the main service panel, the service disconnect, and we've still got the same three wires, two ungrounded and one ground dead conductor. And that ground dead conductor is connected to the service disconnect enclosure. So on the line side of the service, the white wire, the ground dead conductor, it's, uh, it's responsible for doing two things. Number one, it carries the unbalanced load because it's a neutral conductor. But for the purposes of this discussion, it is the fault clearing conductor. So if one of the service conductors had a fault to the service disconnect, it's gonna energize the service disconnect and that fault current needs to travel back to the source and it's gonna do that on the ground dead conductor. Now we have created, I hate to use the word tap, but we, we've spliced onto those service conductors and we've put in another set of service conductors to go to the fire pump disconnect. And we're going to run the same three conductors, two, uh, two ungrounded conductors and one grounded conductor. Now, the funny thing about a fire pump is it probably doesn't necessarily need a neutral conductor to work, Sure, but, you have to bring that ground dead conductor to that disconnect enclosure. And the reason is, if we don't have it, we cannot clear a ground fault. So on the left, if the black or the red wire smacked up against, the, against that disconnect enclosure, how would that fault current get back to the source in a way that generates high currents and trips breakers or open fuses? It has to travel back on the ground dead conductor. So on the supply side of the service disconnect, whether it's one service disconnect or a hundred, we use the ground dead conductor to connect to the metal parts to act as what we call the effective ground fault current path. And it, it's really simple. Without that wire, uh, equipment that becomes energized stays energized. That's a critical connection. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And so I guess talk to me too, or let's walk through one of the things that I think has been a big sticking point or a big question for folks is uh, when we look at this image, we have uh, the, the green wire, our equipment grounding conductor is going to the fire pump, which is absolutely mm -hmm. necessary. We have to bond that equipment. Yep. Um, but it, then it kind of just dead ends. Uh, it doesn't continue on. And so it's not, it's not going to, it's not going straight to a grounding electrode. Um, and it's also not being carried back to the main service panel. So should people be doing that? Or is that a, is that a big no, no? Um, what yeah, so, that, that's been something I've seen, I'm sorry, I, I've seen it in PV systems specifically where an AHJ will say, Nope, you have to have that green wire running all the way back. Uh, and then I've seen others where it's like, absolutely not. So it's, it seems to be a big sticking point. Well, yeah. And, and until the 2020 code, we, we didn't have a lot of guidance. You really had to figure out what's the intent and what did these wires do. It wasn't very prescriptive in the code. Uh, if, if we're working backwards, starting at the fire pump, going back towards the meter, we do have an equipment grounding conductor. It goes to the metal parts of the fire disconnect. But at that disconnect, because it's a service disconnect, we bond neutral to ground in that enclosure. And that white wire, the ground dead conductor, is performing two roles. It's acting as the neutral if we needed it, and it's acting as the fault clearing conductor. It, it's, it's worthwhile, in my opinion, once we're on the supply side of the service, to think of the white wire as a white wire with green face tape around it, because it's doing both tasks. 
right? It, it's doing both. So yeah, it's imperative that we have that. What we do not need is another green wire uh, going from the fire pump disconnect over to the service disconnect. Uh, it would be superfluous. It's not needed because the white wire is already doing that role. And you could even argue that it would perhaps create a code violation because then the conductors are in parallel and they're not the same size and length and everything else. So just let the white wire uh, do what it has been doing for 120 years. You know, we, this is this is not a new concept. This is something we've been doing in the code quite literally from day one. Okay, great. That That's helpful because, I, it, again, it's something that I've seen AHJs adamant about in both cases. Uh, yeah. And so uh, this is this is helpful. So if we take the same same approach, install it as if it's a service, and we install a PV system, we're going to put our interactive inverter uh, in place of that fire pump is all we've done here. And so re with the way 250.25 and 24, what they are saying is installed as it's a service, and here you go. Um, just replace the inverter with with that pump. Uh, and so I guess it's, you know, relatively simple, um, hopefully. Um, but it's worth noting and something you said earlier, Ryan, about the fire pump not needing a neutral uh, is interesting because a lot of the PV inverters don't require a neutral to operate. They don't actually carry current on the neutral. A lot of them use it for phase detection. But if you read the manuals of a lot of inverter manuals, uh, installation manuals, it's not required. You can um, omit the neutral conductor, but like you said, per 25024, you have to bring that to that service disconnect, uh, even if you don't have loads that are utilizing that neutral. Yeah, and you know, it, it kind of comes back. See, once we make what was a load, the fire pump, once we turn that into generation, that's when people tend to get confused. Exactly. Understandably so, because yeah. it, it it's just, you know what? Today's installation is just so much more complex than yesterday's installation, but the fundamentals are still there. Uh, Kirchhoff's law tells us that current leaving the power supply goes back to the power supply, period. So on the line side there, on the, those wires between the PV system disconnect and the service disconnect, if one of those conductors energized the metal parts of that PV system disconnect, that current is going back to the utility, right? Because it was a utility that energized it. So it's got to go back to the utility transformer. We have to give a low impedance path for that to happen. Or when that system disconnects becomes energized, it's going to stay energized and, and end up hurting or killing somebody. Right. Right. And something we have on this slide, you know, it's worth pointing out because it wasn't on the last slide, but, you know, all conductors run together. I think that's just something it's maybe a... Um, maybe obvious to some people, maybe not to others. And so it's just one of those, we're gonna, you're gonna have some sort of a, a pipe coming over from your main service panel over to this new PV system disconnect that can be uh, PVC, it can be rigid, and you're gonna follow the rules in 230 on what that, what that wiring method is. Uh, and then of course, you're gonna bond those as appropriate uh, as, as needed uh, based on what it is that your you know, PVC versus metal uh, pipe and things like that. So just wanted to point that out to folks, you know, that's why we have that there's you, you will be running those and you have to follow the 230 rules in order to to make that happen. Um, one last thing, and it's it's one that comes up and, um, you know, we're not showing it. So it's almost a moot point. But I wanted to get into this idea of parallel paths of current. Um, so if somebody were to run the equipment, continue the equipment grounding conductor from what we have labeled here as the PV system disconnect over to the grounding electrode system in the main panel, there would be a potential of parallel paths. Um, I mean, we would have them, they would be, they would be um, bonded together on both ends. They would be bonded at the same spot. So they're just parallel conductors. And so it seems like we have parallel path possibility, which is, you know, as, I feel like is objectionable current is the, the term that we hear a lot. And so is that another reason to not do it um, or, uh, or is that? Yeah. Just so I, I don't know that I would necessarily call it objectionable current because really if I wanted to Ryan, it, it would be strange, but could I run, you know, back in the day we used to run what we would, what we would call a 200% neutral sometimes uh, okay. to building. So you'd have like a, you'd have a 400 amp service, you'd run two 500 KC mills for the hots, 
and you'd actually run two 500s for the neutral because you wanted the neutral to be extremely large. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, that really would be the same concept here. If I were to if I were to take another wire and connect it to the to the PV disconnect and the service disconnect and put it through that same conduit, the electrons don't care what color that wire is or what color of tape we put on it. Those two wires are just in parallel. So really, it would be essentially like having the 200% neutral. It would just be it would be a waste of time, money, effort, and resources. But uh, me as an inspector, I couldn't make you rip it out. I might talk to you and explain that it really isn't doing anything. Um, if we're putting conductors in parallel like that, they have to comply with the parallel rules in uh, 310.10, which is same size, same length, terminated the same way, same insulation, all of that stuff. Right. So, right. so it's easy to create a violation by doing that, exactly. uh, you know, because they're not the same length and everything else. And it's certainly, you don't get extra credit for doing it either. So I would just recommend not doing it. Just run the three conductors, uh, you know, for single phase. Uh, three conductors like we have shown there. Okay, cool. Well, all that's super helpful. And so, you know, I, I hope this is useful for, for those of you, of you watching. Um, it's It's been one of those topics that's just, like I said, it's been out there for years. Uh, and, and finally, we have some rules around it and uh, appreciate you taking the time to help explain it all, Ryan. Oh, my pleasure. So that's the end of uh, this code corner. We really appreciate you tuning in. Um, encourage you to look us up and learn about some of our other education and design uh, engineering services. Um, and then Ryan, where can people find you as well? Yeah, so you can reach me at uh, ryanjacksonelectrical.com or you can uh, find me on YouTube at uh, just YouTube Ryan Jackson Electrical uh, as well. Great, thank you so much. Thank you, good talking to you.